It is time, time for a new favorite productivity app. If you've been here for a while, you know that I do change my productivity apps once in a while, but I'm usually pretty faithful to a few solid choices. For instance, I've been using Notion since 2019. It's still what I use to organize all of my ideas and notes, both personal or business related, and I do still swear by it. However, my task management system has always fluctuated throughout the years. I never truly felt like I found something incredible to manage tasks and subtasks. Calendar blocking in Google Calendar is the closest I ever got to perfection despite its shortcomings, and more about that in this video. But now, I think I finally found a winner. That app's name is TickTick, and it's definitely not something that is new in the productivity world, but I feel like nobody is actually talking about it enough. TickTick is, at its core, a simple task manager. Create lists, add tasks per list, boom, you're done. But the thing about TickTick is that it does all of this in a stellar way, with everything incredibly well integrated, a well thought of UI, intuitive click and drag options, and so on. The learning curve is super, super shallow because it's that intuitive. If you want to start using TickTick by the end of the video, I promise you that in one hour you'll have the app completely set and ready to use. It's that simple. TickTick is also web-based, which is great for people who need to access their account on business laptops, for instance, but you can also download the app both on your phone or your desktop, so there's an option for literally everyone. So why is TickTick that good? Well, first of all, if you're a fan of list making, but also a fan of calendar blocking, then TickTick is the answer you need because it does both things. To unlock the calendar feature, you have to pay two bucks a month or $27 per year, which for me is completely worth the investment because you also get custom filters, change history, calendar widgets, white noise, estimated timers, reminders for check items, and so on. Besides the combination of two of the most important productivity systems, so task management and time management, TickTick does it really well, so your calendar reflects your to-do list perfectly, and you can go back and forth according to whatever view you'd like to access that day. And if you're coming from Google Calendar, you can simply sync the calendar with TickTick, so don't worry about having to duplicate everything over there, because you can simply import everything over to the app. Then, as you're setting up your tasks, you can assign a priority to each one of them. This extra step makes a lot of sense in the app, because as you assign this priority value to your tasks, you'll see that reflected immediately in their integrated Eisenhower matrix. And if you're not happy with the quadrant a task was placed into, all you have to do is click and drag, as simple as that. The cool thing about the matrix is that it compiles priority-based tasks from all lists, so all of your urgent and important tasks, whether they're business, work, family or learning related, all get in the same quadrant, which is great to give you a bird's eye view of what you have to do at any given time. And if you're not a fan of prioritization based on urgency and importance, that isn't an issue because TickTick also allows you to create and assign tags to each one of your tasks. So if there's another labeling system that makes sense to your lifestyle and your work, you can definitely recreate it within the app. Other cool feature I love, and I dearly miss this in basically any other calendar app, is that when you create a new task in TickTick's calendar, you have the option to add subtasks within that task. So if you're a calendar blocker, you can time block using the calendar view and add subtasks for that task, something we can only do in Google Calendar either by adding subtasks as nodes to a certain task or by overlapping tasks on top of events, which is a weird workaround. And these subtasks are also tasks themselves, so you can postpone them, set a new deadline, and generally organize them as any other task. TickTick also has a great habit tracking feature. It's literally a different tab that houses any regular habit you want to keep track of. I'm usually not really a fan of habit tracking, but having that option within my task management software of choice kind of convinced me that tracking habits may actually be something interesting in the long run. And I feel that now that I'm a mom, it's particularly useful to be able to remember all the tummy time, the vitamins, the drops, the play time and so on, so I have to do this every single day for my child, and it's nice to have a place to keep track of all of those things. And speaking of family, if you need to share a task list with someone, you can. Right now, all of my household and family-related reminders, events, and to-dos are managed in TickTick, because all I have to do is click a button to assign a task to my husband, he'll get the reminder, get the thing done, and it's so much easier and more efficient to manage something like this. 
You can also create sticky notes and have them open at all times in your desktop with quick reminders, tasks for the day, or if you simply want to jot something down that you quickly found online or a note from a meeting. I always have one of these sticky notes open in my laptop all the time, and I cannot even explain properly how useful this has been in some of my most hectic work days. So I'm currently using TikTok in a hybrid way. I'm still figuring out what's the best system since I'm a new mom, most of my day is pretty unpredictable and things have to be moved around a lot since my two month old doesn't really have a nap or feeding schedule yet. So right now I use the calendar view for time related events such as meetings, appointments or coaching sessions, as well as routine based events. Seeing my day laid out like this is pretty helpful as it helps me stay accountable for some sort of routine, at least when it comes to the morning and bedtime routines. Of course that some of this needs adjusting, but it's a guide I enjoy following during the day. Since I've dropped calendar blocking for a while, since having a baby is completely incompatible with that system, task management is solely done in the task management view. I have three main lists, one for personal, one for business, and one for family related tasks and events. I do not use the inbox tab a lot since I usually know where to organize the tasks I come up with and my task list is so simple it doesn't really require a lot of thinking on my part. My today tab though is used and abused since it compiles tasks from all lists and tells me exactly what needs to be achieved by the end of the day, independently of the hour, and it also lists all the habits that are due that day. My work time is reflected in my calendar by these huge blocks of work time. If you have been in my calendar blocking classes, you know that creating a block called work time isn't actually calendar blocking since it doesn't provide you with any guidance on exactly what you should be doing and for how long or what you should be achieving during that time, how many breaks you should be taking, etc. Every time I open my calendar and I see I'm in a work time block, the signal is very simple. I should be tackling my task list for the day. There are no events, it's not a part of my morning routine, evening routine or lunch break. It's just a clear and visual way for me to know I should at least make an attempt to sit down and do some work. This of course means I have to pick my tasks according to priority and duration, taking into account my baby's naps, whether he needs to be fed or not, and so on. And that's why calendar blocking, so picking a specific task for a specific hour, doesn't really work when you have a newborn. I also enjoy using the Eisenhower matrix a lot because it's a neat way to see tasks from multiple categories and be able to compare them with a bird's eye view. Seeing tasks from multiple different areas organized by priority and urgency helps you reevaluate whether you even organize them correctly. For instance, maybe that one meeting may have seemed really urgent at the time, so you categorize it as urgent and important, but when faced with another task in your roster, such as paying taxes, maybe that meeting is still important, but not that urgent. This comparison system works great and it's something I enjoy reviewing every single week to take a grasp of what really matters. And as I mentioned earlier, another thing I've really been enjoying is TikTok's habit tracker, which is definitely something new for me, as I usually hate habit trackers. But I'll be honest though, there are two simple reasons why I've been enjoying the experience a bit more. First of all, because the tracker is integrated in my main calendar and task management app, so there's no back and forth between apps and I can manage everything in one place only, and I really hate using multiple apps for productivity. Secondly, because most of the habits I'm recording are related to my baby, something that is more about remembering things for his sake, rather than using the habit tracking system for my own self-development. However, I still have three different categories recorded there. I have business and work, baby habits and health and self-care. You can also assign different icons and even add the habits to your calendar, but in my own case, I prefer to have those habits hidden to avoid too much clutter on my weekly view. TikTok is a great app to start organizing your life, your new projects and your new goals, and all in all, it helps you put into practice different ways to manage your time. But there is so much you can still learn about productivity and time management to incorporate more self-learning in your life, explore new hobbies and develop new skills, and these all allow you to chase new opportunities. There's actually a fantastic beginner's guide to TikTok that will help you get started on this new productivity setup very quickly and effectively, and you can watch it if you join Skillshare, who's kindly partnering with me for today's video. There are so many different topics that can help you discover new career paths and opportunities, but skills like productivity, self-development and entrepreneurship apply to any field, and it's always a great investment of your time to learn more about them. This year, I'm really focused on growing productivity for humans, my productivity coaching business, and I've been using Skillshare to learn more about email marketing, web design, bookkeeping, and so much more. 
You can also start changing your life with learning, so I highly recommend that you join Skillshare as well and start that life change with your TikTok setup. And then you can also explore all of the other great classes that are available there as well. Don't forget that if you're one of the first 1000 people to use the link I provided in the description box, you can actually get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And that will give you so much time to watch so many of their classes before the trial is even up. So it's definitely worth the time joining. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys.